Hey, Vineyard family, happy Sunday. You know, in times of uncertainty or just fluidity, uh, I find it helpful to return to the foundational things. You know, the things that we learned as a kid or the things that we learned in school or, or maybe the things that we learned the last time we went through difficulty. And so this morning, as we begin worship, I'd like for us to return to a foundational thing, an ancient thing. The prayer of Jesus, or better known as the Lord's Prayer. So if you would, uh, the words will be on the screen, but join me as we pray. Let's pray together. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. There is not a man or a beast, nothing on the land or underneath. Oh, nothing that could ever come between the love you have for me. I could lay my head in Sheol. I could make my bed at the bottom of the darkness deep. But there is not a place I could escape you. To me, your heart won't stop coming after me. Your heart won't stop coming after, coming after me. There is not an angel of the star, there is not a devil in the dark. Change the way you are, the love you have for me. I can lay my head in Sheol. I can make my bed at the bottom of the darkness deep, but there is not a place I could escape you. My strength, 
my strength Mountains ahead Mountains ahead of me And valleys behind Why sorrow may linger and last for the night, but I am never alone. Sorrow may linger and last for the night, but I am never alone. The joy of may be open and weakness revealed, but I'll be healed in the fire. Wounds may be open and weakness revealed, but I'll be healed in the fire. Sorrow may linger and last for the night, but I am never alone. Sorrow may linger and last for the night, but I am never alone. Wounds may be open. Wounds may be open and weakness may joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength, my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength, my Feet.
be covering me with your love if more of you means less of me take everything yes all of you is all I
morning, everyone. I'd like to say it's good to see you. <laughs> I can't wait till I can say it's actually good to see you. It is good to be with you. I'm very thankful that we're able to connect during this weird time, at least through the technology of, of the internet. So welcome. Good to have you together this morning. Today, um, I, I'm actually seated because I don't really have a, uh, you know, one of those inspiring ram bam all that kind of energy uh, message for you today i just want to talk to you as a friend and pastor some very practical things today in the middle of all this you know we all experience disruptions in our everyday ordinary lives something happens to us or perhaps to those close to us and it totally disrupts our routine it changes our perspective it, disrupts the ordinary that we anticipate every day is not there anymore. Uh, it could be anything. It could be um, losing loved ones, could be tragedy, could be illness that debilitates or sidelines you for a while, could be military service for some of you that separates you from your family, and so many uh, other things. But any number of things can disrupt what we would consider to be our normal life. And the most consistent response, at least in my life, every time something disrupts my life, is, is this deep, deep desire to return to normal. And generally, the longer it goes, this return to normal becomes a, a desire to rush to normal, the way it was before the disruption. Who could ever forget, uh, well, some of you weren't born yet, but September 11, 2001, a terrorist attack on our country. You know, that's been 19 years ago. And 19 years ago, we knew the world was bad, but all of a sudden, it was on our doorstep, and we experienced some of the evil in the world in a much more personal way. Actually, some people experienced it so personally that they lost family members. Um, it was a national thing, affected everybody. And actually, the truth is, it was a global thing. And even those subsequent years, you know, some people were called up into their National Guard service, and some servicemen went to the war on terror. So for many people, um, that was tragic. Most of us were inconvenienced. Uh, particularly when it comes to travel. And generally, when the restrictions and the rules and because of security and everything else, after a short period of time, you, we started to develop that, I want to return to normal. And we even got to that rush to normal place. And so eventually, I mean, we did settle into a new normal. Although 19 years later, our, our air travel and things like that, our national security, th those things are still affected. We've, we've made some changes. So it's, we've adjusted to a new normal. In 2005, an uninvited guest arrived in New Orleans. We all remember what, what her name was. It was Katrina. And that disruption didn't stop at our doorstep. No, th this, this woman moved right into our house and made herself at home, and nothing was normal, at least for New Orleanians, for quite some time. Our entire city region was shut down. Commerce, education, government, everything stopped. Now, I wanted to return to normal really quickly, but it was obvious we weren't going to. What well, didn't take very long. I mean, the city was underwater 10 weeks, and before that 10 weeks was up, we had moved from, I want to return to normal, to a rush to normal because you can only take disruption for so long. And so here we are 15 years after Katrina and we're disrupted again by a global pandemic. And in like manner, many are suffering the worst of it. Most are inconvenienced. Many are suffering with illness, uh, financial problems, emotional suffering, um, most of us are just dealing with staying at home. But everybody wants to return to normal. And there's a palpable sense, I think, today, as I watch the news this week, of a desire to rush to normal. You know, I guess if you work in the economy in some way, shape, or form, or you work for the government, it's good to think and to plan 
uh, somebody's got to think, somebody has to plan so that when the time is right, we know what needs to be done and the plan can be implemented in a safe fashion that protects everybody and gets things going again. I think all that needs to be done. I think one of the things I want to address today for, for you and me is this. You can approach things like this impulsively or intentionally. If you approach it impulsively, you know, that uh, rush to normal, you might make some mistakes. If you think through and plan and implement your plan intentionally, you stand a much better chance of settling in to whatever the new normal will be. You'll adjust to it much better. So I'd say to us all today, pray for those who are leading us, who are thinking and planning. But I'd like to turn our attention this morning to us and think about our own response in the weeks ahead as we see some things begin to change. The truth is there are going to be some short-term decisions that will be made for us. You will be allowed to do certain things, not allowed to do other things. And, you know, you can find plenty of information about that on the Internet and a lot of speculation about what the new normal will be. Um, but we will eventually find a vaccine. I believe that. We will eventually develop, a, is it, is, do they call it, it's a, a herd immunity? Is that what they call it? You guys, yeah, isn't that nice? We're part of a herd. And we might all become immune to this at some point in time. That's kind of crazy. But, but it, it'll result in some kind of a new normal. But here's my point today. If you want to move forward and not simply go backwards to the way it was before the disruption, then that'll take some intentionality. And we're going to have to engage in something that's very familiar to those of us who have been in New Orleans for the last 15 years. And it requires great commitment. It requires discipline. And it does require some time to thoughtfully process your life. I remember it not quite so affectionately during Katrina. I used to call it this. We're picking through the pile. Do you remember that? You had a pile of debris on your front lawn or you had a pile of debris in your living room. It was crazy what a flood would do to a house. I mean, things that were used to be in the bedroom are now in the, and everything's pile. It was just a pile of debris. And here's, here's what that meant. We had to pick through the pile and decide, what do I keep? What stays? What goes? Of course, most of it went. But then the next question was, well, what do I replace? And what do I replace it with? I lost a 42-inch TV. I'll replace it with an 85. <laughs> do they make an 85? They probably do, don't they? I mean, good grief. So those are the kinds of... But the, the, the point is you're picking through the pile. And if we don't take this seriously, we'll rush back to normal. Here's what happened in 9-11. I can't... This was said all the time after the attacks of 9-11. The world will never be the same again. Well, actually, looking back now, after 19 years, most of it is pretty much the same, with a few exceptions of, of travel and things like that. After Katrina, I remember one of my neighbors said, man, I don't know what my house is going to look like, but if I lost it all, I don't think I'm going to replace it. And my first thought was, wow. I probably should feel the same way because do I really need all that stuff? Well, the truth is we both came home. He didn't lose that much and what he lost, he replaced. Bam, right back to normal, as normal as normal could be. Nothing really changed at the point of values of time, energy, and resources. Nothing really changed. Now here we have the COVID-19 and I, I hear it every day. I'm sure you do too, that the world is not going to be the same. Change is going to be huge. And so I, I believe that in some senses, but I believe the only way this can turn out to be positive for those of us experiencing it and those of us who are following Christ, if we're really into change, then the only possible way that this becomes a positive is, positive is if we pick through the pile, even though you may not have a literal pile in the middle of your yard or living room. You know, I can't tell you how many weekends. I stand in front of you and I have the privilege of just speaking to you. And, I, and I, when I walk out, I, I think to myself, I said, so when this week 
are our people, myself included, going to have time to think about what I just talked about for 30 minutes? Well, guess what? We got time. And so that's what I'm going to encourage you to do today. We seem to have time to think. We seem to have time to plan and time to pray. We seem to have time right now to start picking through the pile of our lives. Assess where we are. Assess our desires. And then maybe, maybe with this added time, we can actually be intentional instead of impulsive. I'll tell you why that's so important in three areas today. Let's first of all talk about our, our schedule, our calendars. My schedule is much simpler than it has been, I think, since I was a teenager, honestly. My schedule is much simpler. How about yours? There's not that much in it. I mean, everybody I talk to, I say, hey, can we have a Zoom call later this week? Well, my schedule's open. Of course it's open. It's open every day, all day long, all evening. Mine is simpler. I'm sure yours is too. Have you noticed in your neighborhoods what's going on? In my neighborhood, everybody used to hang out in their backyard. We never saw each other. Do you know where we hang out today? Everybody's in the front yard. Everybody wants to be together. Now, we had started some of this in our neighborhood not too many months before this with our, our neighborhood driveway, drinks in the driveway thing. But you know what? That was just, that was this much of what's happening now. Now they're families out walking and riding bikes and walking dogs. And there are people being, they're walking together. There's conversations happening in the neighborhood all the time with proper distancing, of course. It's crazy. I've never seen it like this in all my adult years. Some people say they're getting cabin fever. Maybe so, but the reality is they're experiencing time, time that is free of commitment. Now, let's talk about our schedule. How many of you know it's easier to fill your schedule than it is to fulfill your schedule? It is so easy to say yes to so many things. And as we start moving in a direction of some things returning, remember this. How many times have you had an appointment or an engagement coming up? You're going out for the evening with something and bada bada bing. And, 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 you, and this is what you say before you get in the car. You go like, wow, this sounded like a good idea weeks ago when we put it on the calendar. And now it's like, it's the worst idea possible. I just want to stay home. Well, think about that. It's too easy to say yes to too many things. And then we end up feeling pushed to do all those things. You get to a place where you no longer can go with the flow because the flow's too fast. And truth be told, I don't like this pandemic. I don't like all the negative junk about it. But one thing I don't mind is that the flow has slowed down. My schedule is more simple. So here's the big question. Why fill it back up again? Don't be impulsive. I know we have to work and we have to make a living, but maybe even some decisions need to be made there. I believe my schedule will change again. It changed dramatically after I was home for four months after back surgery. It's going to change again this time because I'm finding the benefit in prioritizing time and taking care of that schedule to where it's not pushing me the way that it normally does. And so don't be impulsive. And the reason we might be impulsive is because we have this feeling like, well, I can't miss anything. I, I need to be busy. I, I live off of adrenaline. Well, you know, you'll only live a shorter time then. Think about this, y'all. Why fill it up? Consider what needs to go what needs to stay. Don't rush to normal. I wish you were here. I wish we could talk, and maybe we can talk online or maybe you can talk with each other about what are you experiencing in this down time with your family. Not so much with friends. We can't be together as much. And then start figuring out how can you be intentional about going forward, about being careful about what gets added back in. 
in reality, perhaps you and your, your significant others, even those, the, your, your children and your family can start deciding what can remain subtracted from my schedule. Well, I don't know how to do that. Well, just remember your busy life. And for those of you who are wondering if I have any scripture today, I do. It's somewhere in the book. And it says, if you're too busy, your life will be a nightmare. It's in there, I promise you. I don't know where. In fact, you got time. Find it. <laughs> Look it up. See where it is. All right. So, too busy? Life is a nightmare. Do some thinking about your schedule. Here's another one. My money is a lot simpler now. There's not much. <laughs> Some of you say, like, I got none. I mean, I'm broke. I lost it. Okay, I get it. But even in this area, a new normal is going to happen. And a new normal, most of us need a new normal, and that's possible. We are probably most impulsive and less intentional with our money than anything else. Why is that? Oh, gosh. You know. I guess you could say, well, it, it all comes down to greed or it all comes down to um, desires, you know, or too much. I don't, I don't know. I think money is easy to be impulsive with because, because we can go shopping. Not doing much shopping these days, are we? Now, men hear that. Men hear that and they roll their eyes kind of elbow their wife because they know she shops at the mall. But men, on the other hand, consider a trip to Home Depot essential. I'm not essential for my job, but going to Home Depot is essential for me to, yeah, no, it's shopping. That's what it is. It's shopping. Who has not been to Home Depot? Men. I, I, I knew it. In fact, some of you have been for the first time in your life because you have time. Watch out with the money. Same thing is true with money as it is with your time. It's easier to get in than it is to get out. This could be an absolute great time. I'm going I'm to challenge you to do something. Look at your bills this month. I guarantee you your credit card charges are going to be less than they have been up to this point in time unless you're an Amazon freak. And I just thought of that. So some of you, if it's higher, then you've really got to think through this. Maybe this is a good time to plan to get out of debt and stop making the hole deeper. Maybe this is a time we have time to think, to plan, to discuss. I mean, husbands and wives can actually be together and talk about this. Learn patience, priorities, Learn the principles of saving money. You know, some of you actually have not done badly through this because you had savings to count on. I've heard that from several people. Well, we had some money put away. How wonderful is that to be prepared? And some have been so extremely generous in a time that there's hardly anything coming in. It's because people have learned the principles of not, impulse, not doing impulsive spending, but saving and being generous as a lifestyle. This is a great time. I'm telling you, this is a great time to be free of self-inflicted financial woes because of our impulsiveness or our fear or our greed. Here would be a great question to ask yourself. What am I currently living without that I can continue to live without? Boy, you're getting personal now. I know. And somebody say, well, this, that, that's crazy. We're all in the same boat. Well, yeah, I guess we are. But if you have to say the boat you were in before was sinking, why would you want to get back in that one? Let's take the time to really think through this. I mean, talk about it, reducing your debt, living off a budget, putting money away, being generous. And listen, if you need help with that, you know that we have the ability to help you. 
to think through these things. I mean, we have, we have people in our church who mentor other folks with, with basic skills in getting this done. This could happen again. If not this, something else. Why wouldn't we be prepared? Do you realize that our church is able to do what we do? And this has been the history of our church, good times and bad. But we are able to do what we do because 20% of our people live this way. They live knowing that they are on a budget, that they spend so much, they save so much, they give so much. And that, you say, well, 20%, that's not very many. It's really not. It's really not. And we've been able to do all that we can do with that going on. And those people are the ones who seem to get through the difficult times the best because they're prepared. Why can't we have 80 to 100% of us doing the same thing? Think how much more of a blessing we will be in the world if we're not trapped in the things the rest of the world's trapped in. Think about it, okay? Finances, time, huge. And then the last one would be, my, my relationships are a lot simpler today. <laughs> there are fewer of them, <laughs> at least face to face. And they're much more focused than they were before. I, know, I, I love my neighbors. I actually know my neighbors. I know them all by name. And I don't know their pets' names, but I know all of the, my neighbors' names now. And it's all because, I would say, because of intentionality. Who knew a few months ago when I was preaching that series? Remember those two series about uh, who is my neighbor? Who knew that we were going to actually meet our neighbors? I don't want that to stop. I don't want to be impulsive and jump back in relationships when there are new things that God is opening up to me. And I know he's opening up new things to you. It doesn't mean that I don't have those other friendships or relationships. But hasn't this shown us the potential and the possibility of really being a blessing to more and more people. Have you ever been impulsive in relationships? Yeah, how many of you are married? <laughs> well, well, maybe not. I hope you weren't impulsive because that happens. I see that in my office all the time. I mean, people marry impulsively, but listen, it's easier to get in a relationship than it is to get out of a relationship, isn't it? Of course it is. Well, I just had this feeling. I had this impulse. I had a shiver, I had a quiver in my, I don't know why, but in my liver, not really. But, and, and I just, I fell in love. It's so much easier when it's impulsive, but, but you know, that's why the divorce rate is so high, because we don't do things intentionally, we do them impulsively. We're not thinking enough about it. I want, I'd like us to think about this as well. It's an Investment, it's an intentional investment of our lives to invest in relationships. With whom? With, with your spouse, with your partner, with your family, with your children, with your neighbors, with your friends. And what does that take? Oh, that takes, yeah, we're back to number one. It takes time. All of these take intentionality. And with more time in my schedule, with less stress over my money, couldn't I learn to be better in all my relationships which at the end of the day, I hope you're learning this. I think I am. I, I, I really hope I learned this, that when you strip everything else away, it's really it's your relationships that matter the most. So look, I know you want to get your kids back in school. I get that. I know you want to get your husband out of the house and back to work. I know that. I get it. I know you want out. You want normal. But it's not normal yet. And so why not work on it while we can? Well, I don't know how to work on relationships if I can't go out and be with people. Well, start at home. In relationships, what gets us in trouble the most? Think about, I'll give you a second to think about that. What is it in a relationship? Think wife, think children, because that's who you're with at home mostly. What gets you in the most trouble? Okay, I'll give you the answer. It's your big fat mouth. It's my big fat mouth. It's the words that come out of my mouth. Here's another scripture for you. It's, it's in Proverbs. A harsh word stirs up anger. It's in Proverbs, that's all I can tell you. 
a harsh word stirs up anger. What does that mean? It means that the tongue is the only tool that gets sharper and sharper the more you use it. Hmm. It doesn't get dull. It gets sharp. It's got a little edge to it. When you speak words that have an edge to it, the person you're speaking to gets a little edgier with theirs. Maybe we should start right here. A gentle answer stops anger. So if a harsh word stirs it up, man, let's just practice. Practice on each other in your own family right now. Let's, let's stop stirring the pot. Learn to listen more than we talk. And then, let's take on all these other areas. Your time, money, and relationships. And let's be intentional and not so impulsive. I know that wasn't a rip-roaring, inspiring, I'm going out and save the world kind of sermon. But I think it's what we need. Because we're going to get back to some sense of normalcy in a few weeks, months, I guess. But I want to go back into it differently. And I'm sure you do as well. And then, you know, I think when we get back together here personally, I think it'll mean much more to us, having been deprived of face-to-face -face for a while. I know some of you can't come and can't physically be present, and, and I know the technology is really good for you. And, but I encourage those of you who, who aren't able to be physically present when we come back, just stay connected to your relationships your intentional relationships with other Christ followers. You need it. But when we come back, we need to be back and we need to be together because we need water and people for baptism. We need anointing oil and people to pray for healing. We need wine and bread for communion with other people. We'll do that soon together as we get back to some sense of normalcy. Let's be intentional in the days ahead. May God bless you. May the Spirit of God wash over you today. May He give you peace. And may, may the Lord give you courage to talk about things, to think about things, to plan things that you have found so easy to neglect in the past, and myself included on that prayer, Lord. It's easy to neglect important things if I'm too busy or I have to stress out about my money. So help us, help us to change and adjust to a new normal in Christ, amen. God bless you. Have a great day. We'll see you soon. If you'd like to give as an act of worship, you can do so online at vcno.org slash give or by texting any dollar amount to 84321. If it's your first time watching with us, thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, one of our pastors would love to connect with you. So just head over to vcno.org slash connect and we'll reach out to you this week. Uh, now, over the last few weeks, we've been able to do so much good in our city, but I'm also reminded that we have to take care of our family as well. So if you're a part of the Vineyard family and you're in need of financial assistance, we'd love to help you out. You can fill out a form at vcno.org slash finances. And one final thing, if you have kids or you're a family, come back at 1115. You can check in here at our Facebook page, and we'll have a special Kingdom Kids service for them. You guys have a great Sunday.